The installation of polyethylene piping systems without electrofusion fittings is hard to imagine nowadays. To fulfill the market's requirements for natural gas and water supply, industry and drainage applications, Agro is continuously expanding its supply range. For a successful installation of e-couplers, high-quality products as well as a good know-how about the installation process is essential. The weld quality strongly depends on the suitability of the utilized equipment and the welder. Thus, every welder has to be trained and has to be in the possession of a valid qualification certificate. The installation has to be in compliance with existing welding standards and Argo installation guidelines. Before the installation work can start, the conditions must be suitable for welding and all required welding equipment and accessory should be prepared. Take care about national safety regulations as well as manufacturer's safety instructions. The welding area has to be protected from the weather like moisture, rain, direct sun radiation, etc. The welding zones of the e-coupler and the pipe have to be dry during the entire welding process, concerning the inside as well as the outside. Welding while medium escapes is not permissible. Pipes and fittings have to be on the same temperature level during the processing. Temperature limits according to the Agro installation guideline are stringent. The pipes have to be cut rectangular with a suitable cutting tool like an electric chainsaw or circular saw. Pipe ends which have a distinctive conical shape need to be shortened. The insertion length of the coupler has to be marked on the pipe's surface. Usually pipes become oval during storage. If the ovality within the welding area is larger than 3 mm, a re-rounding tool has to be used. Suitable are hydraulic or mechanical rounding clamps, which are mounted at the end of the coupler's insertion length. During the pipe extrusion process, an oxide layer is created on the pipe surface. This oxide layer has to be removed completely. The use of a rotation scraping tool, which can be adjusted to the pipe's size, is recommended. Position the scraping tool at the pipe's end. Start with the peeling process and continue until the marking of the insertion length is reached. Take care that the chip does not break off. A single removal of a minimum 0.2 mm, depending on the fit, may already be enough. Due to the big tolerance range of pipes, it may be necessary to repeat the scrapping. In order to avoid a multiple try-on, we recommend measuring the pipe's diameter prior to the scrapping. It is important to have a small annular space. Do not repeat the scraping to remedy installation problems due to ovality. Damages within the welding zone, such as grooves or scratches, are not permissible. Chamfer the pipes outside end with a hand scraper to enable a better installation of the e-coupler and to avoid damages done to the wire. The pipe's inside end should only be deburred. The packaging of the electrofusion coupler should only be removed shortly before the welding. Prior to the mounting, the welding areas of the pipe and of the e-coupler have to be cleaned. The cleaning agent has to be a 100% vaporizing solvent, for example 99% ethanol and 1% methyl ethyl ketone. Use only clean, absorbent, lint-free and undyed disposable paper wipes. Wait until the cleaning agents are evaporated completely from the surface. The insertion depth has to be marked all around the pipe's circumference for the follow-up control. When mounting the e-coupler, take care that the plug connectors and barcodes are easily accessible. The e-coupler must not be wedged or pushed onto the pipe's end by force. Special restraining clamps can be used to mount the coupler and to hold the position during the welding as well as during cooling. 
Assembly can be assisted by tapping round the face with a plastic hammer at the same time. After mounting the first side, perform the same procedure on the second side. Now the tension belts have to be mounted. Prefabricated grooves ease finding the correct position and guide the belts. Pull them tight using the hand ratchet. Additional tools are not permissible. The maximum gap in between the coupler and pipe around the entire circumference must be checked with a feeler gorge. Before the welding procedure can be started, the correct insertion depth on both sides has to be checked by means of the markings. Attention! Pipe ends, which are not fully inserted, may lead to overheating, an uncontrolled escape of melt or self-ignition. Pipes and couplers have to be aligned stress-free. This has to be checked with a water level at the top and front position. The stress-free alignment is required until the end of the cooling phase. For welding, a universal welding machine with automated data recording is recommended. Take care of a sufficient power supply. If applicable, check the power supply of the generator too. Connect the welding equipment and part that should be welded with a cable. The contact areas must be clean and dry. For e-couplers up to dimension 1400 mm, each side has its own electric circuit, also called bifiler system. Prior to welding, each side of the coupler, the annual gap between the coupler and the pipe needs to be reduced with a preheating function. The programming of the preheating parameters is done by reading the white preheating barcode with a barcode pen or scanner. After the pre-cooling time is over, the gap has to be smaller than 2 mm, which can be checked with a feeler gorge. If the gap is OK, start the welding with a standard component barcode. If the gap is too big, repeat the preheating. For both e-coupler types, the tension belts avoid outward expansion of the e-coupler. After the cooling time, the belts can be removed. The welded parts may be moved only after a total cooling down. Additionally, the cooling time according to the Agro installation guideline, until the pressure test can be performed, has to be considered. For any further information, please contact the Agro Technical Department.